out of the door. <laughs> well, <laughs> that had to happen. I was suffering there. Como quieras. Okay. Um, so the Tree of Life worked out very well because people of all ages and creeds and colors came and felt very comfortable and noticed the colorfulness and the serenity of the place. And by the end of the night, everyone ended up staying an extra couple of hours just enjoying the candlelight. And I passed around a little shot of tequila to everybody with a little limon in it just to end the ceremony right. And then we all went home. And people brought beautiful gifts and things that were very meaningful to them and gifts of all different areas of the arts. A couple of flutes made it in the door. Really beautiful picture of a barrio family made it in to the tree. And lots of all kinds of objects from people, all different areas of understanding. And I was very happy for that because I felt it was kind of like the beginning of an understanding for me of how to incorporate all peoples into my artwork. Next thing I'd like to talk about is uh, my newer some of my newer series, and I've already spoken about the star series, which uh, includes the corn star and the sun star and the flowered star. Uh, along with that series, I'm working on uh, what I'll call a Benacho series for right now. And what I've done is I've taken friends of mine. This is a Bavata right here in town. And I made a mold of her face, and then I'm going to press paper into it afterwards. And then I'm completing a series of headdresses around the sculptured paper heads. And these are definitely influenced and inspired by my work as a danzante in the Flores de Aslan. Whenever we dance, we always wear benachos. And the danzantes that um, have danced for many years, the veteranas of the danza, wear many feathers in their hair and also have emblems of uh, station and emblems of symbols that mean of importance to them, whether it's Tlaloc and the water symbol or whether it's Quetzalcoatl or Ejecat, the wind symbol. Any of those are Olin. A lot of people use Olin. And as a danzante, I'm beginning to understand what that means in terms of incorporating the traditional aspects of Chicanismo into my work. And this is an entry point for me. And I've worked on a personal portrait one as well. Th they seem to speak about auric concepts, too. I know that's a 20th century word. But that's how I learned to call it. I call it the color fields that surround our bodies and surround our heads. So that the panachos really become, in my work, a symbol of the energy that you carry around with you. My penacho that I made for myself has a symbol of the earth above it, the whole earth, one of those shots taken by the satellites that circles the earth. And that's what a lot of my work is going towards, is uh, goodwill and good prayers towards the whole earth and all peoples and the uh, health of Mother Earth and all of the living beings, all of my relations on earth and beyond it, the two-legged, the three-legged, the four-legged, the bugs, those that fly, the plants, those that swim, and the spirits, all the spirits that hang around of all our leaders and antipasados and tatas that have gone before us, and all of the spirits in terms of the unborn children, all of that global. And like I said, that's a big dream, and it's something that I'm going to be working on for the rest of my life. So now I'm doing a series of Benacho pieces, and I'm working closely with the women that I create the Benacho pieces for, trying to get to know them, uh, trying to understand more about them as women, uh, as mothers, in their families, with their children, bringing their children with them when I make the masks on them, and talking to them about their place in the barrio, their place in Chicanismo, Ta doing one of my sister I hope to do in the future and talk to her about it, maybe blow her out a little bit and get her more in touch with her own Chicanismo because we're all in different areas of it. We're all blending in in different ways, and all ways are good, all ways are right, depending on the person and what their particular work is, what the Creator sent them here for. Speaking of women, 
I can only say that I'm really grateful to a lot of women all throughout the state, artistas that have helped me in growing. Amalia Mesa Baines has come up again and again and again. Every time I go through San Francisco, I go visit Amalia because I consider her one of the most open Chicanas I know, one of the most truly sincere, open people that I know, one of the most articulate, educated, advanced women of any culture that I know. She's helped me solve a lot of problems just through casual conversation, just through casual, hey, how's it going, stuff. And I call her a lot and speak to her. And I like the fact that she's involved in designing, that she's involved in making artwork. Of course, I love the fact that she makes altares because she's in connection with that spiritual part of us that I'm talking about, that I really find a lot of, a lot of uh, good, good meat to eat in. And I really love her husband, Richard. I think he's a great guy. I like the way that she's involved with other Chicanos, that she's involved with the community. I remember the other day that someone was talking about a beauty contest for Chicanas and that it would include not only beauty of body, but beauty of spirit, intellectual beauty, knowledge of cultura, knowledge of history, knowledge of um, uh, your, say, community leadership, uh, understanding of the spirit. Like, that would be like a beauty contest for Chicanas. And when I look around the state, I see a lot of women who... Uh, really emanate a lot of that good energy. You know, like uh, Gina, uh, Juanishi Orozco's wife, Gina in Sacramento, is a beautiful woman, and I really love her. I love Gina. She has four beautiful sons, and she's involved in ceremonia every year, and she's an artista, and she works to administrate uh, special education, art education type classes for youth and for adults and she helps her husband and gives him the support of the mural projects that he completes in order to really get the Chicano word out to the community so that people become opened and educated to what Chicanos really are about and not closed and stereotypical which is the thing that we all have to work about and that's why I'm glad to be a part of this video because I'm hoping that maybe some of the words that I speak will help people to open their ears and their eyes to the real um, backbone of the Chicano gente and its beauty. Oh my God, the beauty of our people. Oh, and then let's see, there's a whole group that I worked with last year called Madre Tierra Press. We just finished publishing a book last year, uh, completed by 13 Chicano women, including myself. Uh, I coordinated the event. There was five visual artists, four writers, two photographers, a dancer, and a sculptor. And we put together a really beautiful book called Madre Tierra, where all the women were asked to respond to the concept of Madre Tierra. And because there wasn't any strictures on what you could say or what you couldn't say about your feelings towards Madre Tierra, we came up with this book that discusses these fabulous aspects. Some women talked about themselves, some women talked about their mothers, their grandmothers, some women talked about the, the strength and the power, some women talked about the hardships and the loneliness. Some women talked about their entire familias, and some women, I did the title page, and I talked about Madre Tierra as the whole planet in the form of a rosa. And uh, I could go on with those women's names, but um, Naomi Quinones, uh, Mary Helen Ponce, um, Irene Cervantes, Anita Rodriguez, Josefina Gallardo, Cecilia Casaneda Quintero, Judy Miranda, Rosemary Weiner, Oh, God, they go on forever. There's a dozen of them. And all of those women taught me wonderful lessons about their understanding of Chicanismo, about their understanding of the community, of their understanding of how to balance out the professional life with the artistic life, with their spiritual understanding of the world and their community. Los Angeles is so big that it's so hard to talk about individuals in L.A. It's really a big community. My God, there's so many of us here. It would shock people, but we're all underground, right? Nobody knows about us. That's the, that's the trick to it. You can kind of go under it. Cynthia Alanis was another woman, a fabulous artist. And all of these women, of course, have their strengths, their hardships, their statements, and their ability to stick with it, their ability to be Chicanas and love being Chicanas and go for it and spend their whole lives with it and teach it to their children, right? So I give thanks to all those good women who helped me. 
who have helped me and I'm sure will continue to help me, you know, Patricia Rodriguez and uh, um, Josie Talamantes up in Sacramento. Oh, there's tons of them, all these people who've helped me. Um, right now, I'm getting a lot of other help from people at the Academia Quinto Sol here in Long Beach, really beautiful bilingual preschool for kids. And uh, there's 225 kids at the school, so you're just inundated by energy, child energy. And uh, our director, uh, Francisco Sandoval, is a great guy, really spiritual guy, really philosophical guy, great boss, great boss, somebody you can grow with, right? And I'm art director there, and I work there part-time. I, I work part-time as an administrator, part-time as a wife, and a housekeeper, homekeeper, it's a better word, part-time as a community worker, and part-time as an artist. So I have all of those put together, and that's the only way it could be. You have to balance yourself out. If you isolate yourself in your studio and you're just an artist all the time, you don't have friends, you don't have people to grow with, you don't have people to bounce off of, you don't have a community or a culture to be a part of. If you just have a job, then you're just stuck in the office, the same old thing. My job, fortunately for me, is great. I'm working on a video piece, the history of California for children, fantasy imagery, and the understanding of Chicanos and where they fit in the history of California and pride in their gente and in their tatas, the mestizos that came here to work and the people who stayed, you know, to live with it, live it through. Uh, we're working on a gigantic stage right now that we're hoping will be a centro for Chicano professional performance artists. It's a theater with a thousand seats in it, getting all kinds of foundation and corporate support to do that. And it's really a beautiful place to work. And all the women and the men there, I'd like to thank them too for all the good energy that they've brought to me. So if you're a worker and you're an artist and you keep your home together and you do community work so that you can be out there with the blood of the barrio, then I think you've got a good handle on staying with it. You've got enough support around you, enough sangre around you as that little ovary. You've got that cushion to stay alive and have all the food and the feed that you need to stay alive and to grow to a total adult, be born at last, and say those things that will hopefully heal and help all the people. Thank you very much. Sure. By the time you're finished with that, you could be bad, huh? You could be bad. Oh, I wish I could feed you guys. Don't you guys look hungry? Aren't you, you just sleepy? You gotta drive oh. <laughs> You guys gotta shoot nails, tomorrow? Kind of <coughs> Nine o'clock. <coughs> Just think how proud you'd be if it goes national and your name's on it. No? Did I hear you say you wanted to feed us? <laughs> yeah. I'll feed you. Anybody hungry? You guys hungry? No, I'll answer. I can make tacos really no, easy. I just want to go back to sleep after this. Yeah. But Fresh. No, you I feel fine. What you want to do? I can make tacos just like that. Okay. Well, you, <laughs> you should have let me know because you guys really could have stayed at my place. My husband's gone and I have two queen size beds. Towels. Comida. We, we had to make some adjustments today. This, 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 is our fourth, this is our fourth interview today. In different parts. Of Golly city. Moses, that's like... I am funky right now. <laughs> I am funky! <laughs> it's too bad, man. Well, there'll be other times. Yeah. When are you, you going to have a party in September? What I'm going to probably have a September, uh, September party like late in September, after the 16th, right? right? After the 16th, then I'll probably throw a party. You guys have to leave me all your addresses and I'll mail the invitation when you come down. When's, uh, when's the next party after uh, September 16th? You're going to do it periodically? Sir, probably the first of the year. Just to have parties and invite everybody up. Like last time, a whole bunch of people couldn't make it. So I'm going to invite a bunch of people that couldn't make it, plus a whole bunch of new people this time. Great. I just Because this room really can't hold more than, say, 30 people. Really, that's like max. Scotch. I got a party. Scotch. Right. No. Would you like to taste? Oh, sure. There's my Would glass right up there. Okay. 
I really want to thank all of you for coming all the way down to Long Beach and including me in this. I realize it must have been a hell of a haul. the first Long Beach artist we've done before. I'm really, I keep exposure. I mean, hey, I'm telling you, it's a dirge. And you want to know something that quick, the, the, the crummy thing about it, though, is that Chicano artists get more get more exposure than most of the Anglo artists I know. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm like a star around this place. It's funny, yeah, they I think... Show or that, uh-huh, because when I got involved in the Chicano community, all my multicultural artist friends said, Linda, you're, you're cutting your throat. I told you that mm -hmm. out in the hallway. Mm -hmm. You're cutting your throat, Linda. It's going to kill your career. What's the name of this building? Jurgen's Trust. Do you know Jeff Greenwald? No. Oh, okay. Is he here? I, yeah, I think he was. If he was, I just he realized it. this is that Susan. restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> I got uh, asked to be on an arts policy task force here in Long Beach to uh, discuss the arts needs of the city. Mm -hmm. I was the only minority woman on the whole thing, and everybody on it was 20 years at least, if not oh, 30 yeah. and 40 years my senior. It was a trip. It was a trip. So they asked me to help them understand what was going on in terms of citywide arts here. So I put together a slideshow form of home owning artists. Because okay. they were interested in taxpayers, right? That's right. all they're interested in. So I got, I called my friends, do you own your place? Yes. Do you own your place? Yes. Do you own your place? And I got together 25 people that own their places and all cultures. I had black, Asian, white, and Hispanic, all, all, at all different levels, all, all different levels of art, sculpture, painting, drawing, and ceramics, everything, and threw this big old uh, slideshow at them, blew them out the window. Because all the artists around here are underground. I'm not kidding you, everybody's yeah. underground and there's only one gallery in town. One gallery, 368,000 people in one gallery. This place, well you know, $30 billion would be pumped in the Long Beach, corporate mm -hmm. dollars. Fire? I heard that Valley Girl stuff all last summer. I vacationed with my ex-wife and my daughter. And that's all, I, my daughter was 12 years old and just going crazy. What a shame that that's what awesome. you became, you know. You know. I mean, you know, out of so much stuff. His yeah, son has a little record out yeah. now. This piece is going to Sacramento. It's going to be a show up there. Which uh, show is that? It's a mask show out of, out of the uh, Posada Gallery. Out of where? Posada. Posada? Posada. All right. In uh, Sacramento. Mm. When? Uh, I think it's going to be in November. Bizarre because I got a letter from him telling me that they wanted a mask piece two weeks after I finished it. Yeah, just right. You know, we have a show at Oaks College where I work uh, every November for Dia de los Muertos. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to be a small place. Uh, but we've had, you know, a lot of the big name artists show with. Uh, you know, beginning artists, novices. It's great. It makes everything pretty light. Plexiglass and plastic, so is that what you're starting with? Oh, that, actually I bought those pieces of plexiglass months and months and months and months ago. I walk into a store and they have something on sale and it's a piece of junk. And I go, okay, a quarter, I'll take it. And I just like, well, my habit is to lay everything out on the table. And then I'll just be walking around the room, having a dream state, right? When I see that's right, it's kind of uh, natural fibers, plastics. I've tried to bring in bone and shell and stuff. Give me a second, my place is here for you. Let's see, this goes here. This is a piece in progress. So you kind of begin to get an understanding of what that piece would look like. Sure. <laughs> he runs around with his hair 